And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Combat Kettlebell. Um, today, we are going to have Michelle doing the workout. I'm going to be instructing through the workout. So this one's going to be a hybrid hard leg day. Um, you're going to need your bell, so preferably a heavy bell and a lighter bell, if you have one, and then a TRX. So um, the progression of the workout is going to be as follows. We're going to do the dynamic stretching work, which Michelle is warming up right now. So she started with a little bend and reach and a little windmill action. Now she's doing, well, now she's going back into her well, just, bend and reach. <laughs> I'm going to come up to the groiner. Right. And then flow into her groiner pattern. So bend and reach, windmills, typical. So my knee's a little banged up today, so Michelle said, I'll do a leg workout for you. So That's right. I'm like, hey, gosh. So sometimes we just got to take care of our bodies and get back in the swing of things when we can, so. Uh, no pun intended, the swing of things. Right, so you like my pun play on words? So, as usual today, uh, we're gonna start with our bigger movements first. We're gonna do 20 swings and 10 goblet squats. So, Let's do it. pretty Why standard sure? operating procedure. Now, we're gonna use a double-handed swing. You can use a single-handed swing. Just double up on your reps. You if you have a lighter belt. Yeah. There you go, yeah, that'll work. And we're gonna get a nice hip hinge. So showing you the hip hinge standard. Make sure you're accelerating. Drop, let the bell swing back to you and then drive it up hard. There we go. So we get up to a good pace with the bells. Remember, we want to drive through hard with the hips. So entirely controlled by the hips. No hinging at the back. There we go. Make sure you're pulling the bell right into um, the crotch so it'll, it'll almost hit you in the butt. It's not going to hit you, but it's going to get close. Good, nice. Now we're going to go directly into our goblet squats here. Just going to give them a little 30 degree rack up. Let's go. So Michelle's ankles, if you have really poor ankle stability or mobility, there you go, good. You might want to put your feet up on a little bit of a razor, like I'm using a 2 by 4 for Michelle. I have the rubber one too. Yeah, it's fine. It's going to work. This allows her to get nice and deep into the squat position. And she's using my preferred method of clutching your hands around the bell, thumb through the horns, and handle into the chest. She rips out 10 minutes? quick reps. Oh, nah, just 10 quick reps. Okay. Good, nice. Good. Now go right back into your kettlebell swing there. Snap them up. There you go. Turn a little bit more, 30 degrees. There you go. Better? Yeah, that's much better. Remember, nice hard drive from the hips. Okay. Squeeze the bone at the top, brace your abs. You basically want to stack the torso on top of the pelvis. Okay? So you want to avoid any excessive extension of the back. It should be firm and tight, but you don't want to hinge back with your lower back. You want this motion to be entirely controlled by your hips. Go to the next. That's it. All the way to 20. Push up down. Got a board. All right, now nice low squat pattern. Make sure you're bracing your core tight. There you go. You always wanna be in control on your squats. You wanna be able to pause at any range of motion in your squat. So you come all the way down and you're Call bouncing out of the bottom. You wanna be able to pause during your squat pattern. There we go, good. So that way your legs are in control and you're controlling it with the muscles. Yeah, good, nice. Two more. Ten quick reps. Good, nice. Now, as usual, we're just going to do three sets here. I'm going to encourage you advanced uh, kettlebell enthusiasts to do from four to six rounds of this. So, and as usual, Michelle likes to show the things not to do. So, moving with the swinging bell. Don't do that at home. <clears throat> there we go. Good, nice. Nice, quick transition. Good hip pop. You're going to ballistically be throwing that bell away from you. There shouldn't be no breakdown in form. You shouldn't see the bell pitch at the top. If you are, you're losing force somewhere. Extend through the hips, through your shoulders, and into your arms. Good, next. Okay, so we're coming up on our last little goblet squat. Get our heels set. Nice firm posture. Good bracing through the core. Remember, we want to be having a nice core brace through all of these. So kettlebell work is a lot of core 
strength. And if you're not taking the time to control your breathing and make sure you're breathing in through your core, well, it might be time to start working on some breathing mechanics in order to control your posture. So if you notice some excessive tipping forward in that, in that sense, or just poor form considerations like that, you might want to consider learning how to diaphragm and breathe and brace your core properly. So now our second set, we're going to do, we're going to do a kettlebell good morning. So Michelle's going to rack the bell up onto the chest, just like she had for the goblet squat. Hold it in real tight. And then she's just going to hinge back at the hips. Do you want me like this? That's fine. Okay. Hinge back and then up. Good. Now notice she's throwing her hips way back. So she wants to get into the hamstrings. Go a little quicker. There you go. Just a little quicker. Say a little and, you know, she goes like <laughs> super fast. Is so better? controlled but smooth. There we go. That's it. Is that Keep that kettlebell close, close, close to the body. There you go. Go nice. Elbows are tucked in. So now, this is going to simulate a good morning pattern. This is especially useful if you have a lighter bell because you're still going to be working the hamstrings, glutes, and the lower back very hard. But you want to make sure that you're keeping your core braced tight while you do these so you don't stress your back out. Okay? Ten. So we do a 10 or 12 of those. Now we're going into a front rack forward lunge. Okay? So front rack position with the bell. No, front rack position. One hand. One hand. One hand. Scooped in. Yep. Held tight to the chest. Good. Nice. Give yourself some room. There you go. Take a big step forward. Same leg. Bring the knee. Yep, stay on the same leg. Same leg, 10 to 12 reps. So we take a big step, bring the knee down, drive it back up to the top. <coughs> now make sure on your lunge, when you take that first step, you pause, take the step, and then go down, and then transition back up. So now Michelle can do these fast. Good, nice. You need to hold that bell on tight. Oh, tighter? Tighter. Right to the chest. There we go. So, small little adjustment that I did for Michelle. This is a very common fault you see in a lot of people. They try to start bringing their elbow out way wide. You want to hold that bell nice and tight into the chest cavity so it's cradled up on your chest and bicep and forearm. Good. Nice. There we go. So, that way it's held in there in a nice firm position and it's almost a part of you. You don't want the bell hanging down crazy off the shoulders because you're just going to end up wearing your shoulders out. And it's going to be a lot more painful for you to do the movement. So it should be a nice little socket right in there. So thumb to the throat, bells on the bicep and the chest. You should be able to hold that almost all day. Yeah. Good, nice. That's Two it. Two more. Two more reps. How many are we going for though? 10, 12. Okay. 10, 12 out of each of these. So kettlebell good morning, 10, 12 of those. If you have a really light bell, you might want to cruise the reps up to a 20 and then go into your forward lunges. About 10, 12 for size, good for most people. There we go. Good. Is this right? Yep. Holding it nice tight. There we go. Good, nice. Elbows up. There we go. Good, nice. That's it. So it's like almost, if I had a mouse peak? Uh, sure, yeah. Well, like the closeness of it. Yeah, keep it close to the body. You want it as close as you possibly can. Okay. It's cradled in on the chest, just like a goblet squat. Okay. And you're just transitioning it forward and back with maneuvering from the hips. Notice there's very minimal back motion in here. Her back is nice and rigid. She's throwing her hips back, getting into the hamstrings and the glutes. Good, nice. 10 or 12 quick reps. Ten. Yeah, very good. Nice. So now take it up for the rack. No, where's the rack? There you go. Good, nice. Bicep? Yep, bicep in. Thumb. Thumb, yep, good. Okay, so now we take a step forward, bringing the knee down, driving back up to the top. Now, this is a very difficult move for a lot of people because you have to actually go forward, decelerate, come down, and then pick yourself back up. So it's a lot of explosiveness trying to get yourself back up. If you have trouble with this move, you can always do the reverse lunge until your legs get stronger, which go ahead and do the reverse lunge on this next one. So this one is where you're just stepping backwards and you're planting that toe and then dropping it down. Now this is very useful for people with really poor knees or if you've already had a, a bad run in with knee injuries. It's often more gentle. You're not having to decelerate when you come back. You're not having to stop either, like that acceleration when you go forward. Right. And that's and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about when you step forward, you're having to decelerate. And then when you're coming back, you're already in a decelerated pattern. Good. 
Good, nice. Last one. Last one. Good, nice. Great job, everyone. Okay, we're just gonna gear up for our last set of these, and then we're gonna get ready for some pistol squats and elevated sit So we're gonna throw in a little core. That's it, nice and tight from the core, sitting back with the hips, driving back up. There we go. Good, nice. That's it. She's taking good care, bracing her core nice and tight. She throws her hips back. Should feel this great in the hamstrings. Yeah. yeah. Good, nice. Excellent work. Come on. If I'm not doing it right, I'll feel it in my lower back, right? Right. Yeah, if you're doing it wrong, you're going to feel this movement a lot in the lower back, which is incorrect. You want to be feeling it in the hamstrings. So as soon as your hamstrings and glutes are tightened up as far as they go, that's when you want to start on, bed, on your way back up. Okay, good, nice. In our rack position, going into our forward lunges. Hold nice and tight. That's it. Remember to keep your knees pointing in the same direction as your toes, okay? So now your knees can go forward over your toes a little bit if they need to, but in most cases, the knees will always be right around where the toe is. So otherwise, you may be going too uh, narrow in your stance. You might not be stepping forward a lot, uh, far enough. So just think about taking a slightly larger than normal step and then just bringing that knee down like you're going to take a knee. Only you're not going to touch the ground, you're just going to hover it about an inch above the ground and then come back up. But that's a good way to test it, right? So I take my step, this is my start position. Right, but elevate. And you don't want to lose connectivity with your back toe. There you go. Good. Go. There we go. Good, nice. Almost there. Nice Two more. and tight. Good. Where's that elbow? Hold that elbow in tight. In? Yes. In. Tight to the body. There you go. Good, nice. Also, make sure that heel does not come off the ground. Okay. So now for our single legged squats, we're going to use a rack assist for this one. Okay. So go ahead and um, grab a hold of the rack with one hand. No. Okay. Right. Like this. Yep. Okay, so as I demonstrated before. Okay. Alright, now for most everyone, this is gonna be a tough move. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of lean back into your arms. So long arm, lean back with your hips, and then squat down as deep as you can. So now here's a full pistol, okay, or a full single legged squat. Now transitioning out of that is very difficult, okay? So if you can only go down so far, only go down so far, and then come back up to the top, okay? So now obviously you can do more reps. So if you're only able to do a partial, then do 10 more reps. We're just gonna do, try to do 10 per leg, and then we're gonna switch it. Okay, there we go. Very uh, nice. Now why did that heel come off the ground? Because I that heel on the ground. Okay. So long arm, lean back into it. There we go. And just use your arm as a little bit of an assist to get yourself back up. Okay? You're gonna be free to do Yep. And if your leg strength is worn out already, then just go as many as you can until you have to switch or until you feel like your form is breaking down. Remember to hold that other leg up straight as a cantilever. Okay. Sit back into it and push up. There you go. Good, nice. So a little bit of discrepancy in between one leg and the other. Yeah. Right. So now we're going to do our elevated steps. So we're going to hop on the ground here. I'm going to put our feet up on a high box or a chair, whatever you got. Basically, let's get closer, get closer, closer, good. You want this 90 degree bend. So you can dig your heels in, that's going to activate your hamstrings on the other end. So we're going to deactivate the hip flexors and we're going to try to come up and touch our ankles, if possible. If not, we're just going to try to get the shoulders off the ground. Okay? We're going to go 20 reps, there we go, that's it. Now, if you're really strong in the core, you can go ahead and add a light kettlebell load to this. Where would you put the kettlebell? You could just hold it in your hands. So like, uh, just over my head? Yep. Okay. Good. Now, you're not making enough connection here. Make connection here to deactivate your hip flexors. That way you can sit up. Okay. And we have a little bit of a shimmy back here with this one. This one's a little tall block, so. Yeah. There we go. So. Two more. Two more. All right, here she goes. Good, nice. Excellent work. Yes, good, nice. Okay, so now we're all geared up out of that one. We're going to go back into our single legged squat here or a pistol. We're working on our pistols. Good, nice. You know, the heel came up. That okay. was a good one. So, 
keep rigid here, okay? okay. Move at your hips. So lean back into your arm now with your bum. There we go. Oh, it's because I was there too far. Okay. Yeah, you're too far forward, okay? So okay. now with this assisted from the rack, you want to be back so your arm is long. Okay? And you don't want to try to pull on your arm because that's not the benefit of the leg. We want to try to use the leg as much as possible. We're using the rack as a position so we can lean back, get a nice depth mm -hmm. into the squat, and then we can also use our hand to kind of pull us up if we need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so this is a tough leg move. So it will challenge you. I'm so trying. Yep, you're doing fine. This leg. That's it. Remember, hip. You gotta use your hip. Good, nice. So now, many of you will have a similar experience like Michelle is having here with one hip being really, really tight and not being able to get full depth. That's fine. We gotta always work on mobilizing this stuff later. Right? That's why So it's okay to come down part way and then come back up. Your main thing is you're trying to strengthen throughout the range of motion that you have. Okay, here we go. Right into our elevated sips. Remember, keep those heels dug in. If you need to back up a little bit, back up a little bit. Just need a little bit of that elevation. And we're rocking and rolling on those sips. We're trying to get to our ankles. Many of you may not be able to get to your ankles. Just get your shoulders off the ground. You're still going to work the abs really hard. They're so far. Yeah, come here. Let's go. Come here. Fire it up there. Almost there, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, I want to do these four sets, four sets of each of these. Bring you guys back home. Go ahead, nice. Two That's more. it. Keep going. Come on. That's it. Working it hard. Let's go. Yeah, there it is. Good, nice. Okay. So we're getting ready for our last set. There we go. Throwing the leg forward, hip back. And take your time. You're rushing into this. Maybe I should start with the bad leg? Sure. You can start with the bad leg. Switch it up a little bit. Come on. Hip. Yeah, here we go. Hip. So start with the leg out nice and straight. Hip back. Get as deep as you can before you have to come up to the top. There you go. Good, nice. Like. Good, nice. So what this tells me is there's a lot of tension in the hip flexor on this side that we need to address. Because it automatically pulls her torso forward as she starts coming down. She's not able to get all the way down. Okay, here we go. And the other side. And the other side is pretty solid overall. We can get into that range. Still not super strong out of the bottom position. And that's kind of what we're getting towards is trying to strengthen that leg up so that it can actually do that. And we're gonna work on the balance and the coordination later. A lot of people won't ever get enough mobility to do a single legged pistol squat. Not very easily anyway. It requires a lot of work on your mobility in the hips, hamstrings, and hip flexors. Can be done. But we have to break this down in the stages for everyone. So, and it's very independent. So, what I would suggest for Michelle here is we're going to spend a good amount of time digging into that hip flexor with a lacrosse ball and a kettlebell and spending some time hanging out in the seated couch position, maybe with a little band distraction, trying to balance those out a little bit. So, and this is very common. Um, you see this a lot in people that have a lot of desk jobs. They're seated all the time and their hip flexors are just so tight that it just ends up pulling the torso forward. Because if I cross my legs, it's always the same? It's possible, yeah. Any position that you're in a lot of, it can cause that sort of imbalance. Okay, so our next exercise, we're gonna get on our TRX. We're gonna do TRX leg curls. So we're gonna hop down on the ground. You see the other way? On your back. It's a hamstring curl. Oh, sorry, sorry. So think of this like a physio ball curl. I'm just gonna assist Michelle getting those straps on here. She's gonna put her palms down. Elevate her hips. Try to keep the feet close together because it's going to be a little easier. And then she's just going to curl back towards her bum. There we go. Now, notice we're always trying to keep our hips off the ground. That way we get the most tension. We're getting a little back work in here too. I'm going to curl those up. And we're just going to go until fatigue. So, could be 20, could be 10. It is 10. So, good, nice. Now, our next one is going to be a plank leg extension. Okay, so basically a body weight plank with a leg extension added in. So, go ahead and climb out of there. We're gonna use our elevated position, so your chair, your box. We're gonna pin the toes on top of the chair or the box. Good, nice. Go from the elbows. There we go, good, nice. 
Now, we're just gonna hinge down at the knees and then extend up. There we go. Now notice she'll kind of roll on her toes. Do you want that? Yep, it's fine. Good, nice. I want you to go deeper. I want you to go all the way down. There we go, and up. So there I'm, we go. I'm bringing my hips down too then. Yeah, so. everything's gonna drop. Okay. Well, true. Extend. Okay. Good. Keep, keep rigid here. Okay. You're basically just bending at the knees, trying to get as much range at the knees as possible. Is that good? That's close. Good, next. Think about, think about bringing your knees down to the floor and then bringing them back up. Okay? Everything else is just going to remain in that rigid plank position. Okay? I think what will help with that to get my knees lower is if I come closer. Yes. Yeah. You have to be, like, start yourself off in a nice solid plank position with just your toes on the box. And then just remember you're bending at the knees. Oops. There we go. Go ahead. We've got the TRX. Looped on there. There we go. Good, nice. Elevated hips. There we go. Pack the hands into the floor. Good, nice. Now just curl back towards you. That's it. Now this will be quite a bit more um, extreme on the hamstrings for some of you. And it's definitely a lot more challenging than a physio ball. But if you have a physio ball, this is also an alternate method. There we go. Good, nice. Here, pack your hands into the oh, floor. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. Good, nice. Good, excellent. Hey. And if you have small little ankles, sometimes you get stuck in the TRX, <laughs> which is annoying, but it happens. That's why you're here. There we go. That's why we keep you. Okay, here we go. Nice solid plank position at the top. Just make a nice rigid plank position. There you go. Scoot out with your toes just a little bit. There we go. Good, nice. Now, just bend the knees. Bend the knees down to the ground and then come back. There we go. Good, nice. That's it. So now we can do these for time or we can do them for reps. I generally just say go until fatigue. Either your core will fatigue or your leg will fatigue. Depends on how tired either are. Am I going to feel this in my bum? No. Okay. You should not feel this in the bum. This should be entirely um, in the core section, in the abs, obliques, lower back, and the quadriceps. Because right? you're working on leg extension, you're working on body weight leg extension, right? Set. Move that through, put some tension there. There we go. Alright. We're setting up for our last set here. Good. Hand position. Good, nice. Hips are elevated and we're curling back. Try to keep your feet closer together. It will be a little easier for you. And really drive those hips up as you come high. As you come up, you want to drive everything back towards you. That way you're almost bringing your heels to your bum. Good, nice. That's it. Stay focused. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Good. And up. Stuck. There we go. Get Michelle and stuck. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna go with our last set. Leg extension planks. There we go. Set up in that nice solid plank position first. Good, nice. There we go. All right. Take down and come back. Good. Now you're letting your core sag. Okay. okay. Keep everything elevated, okay? Keep your hips up there. Don't let your hips come down. Just okay. flex up the knees. And just come back. Knees. There you go. Good. Nice. So one of the challenging things with this one is just trying to keep that rigid core section from the hips up through the shoulders and then being able to bend your knees. Okay. So now you can also do a harder variation of this with one leg and keep the other leg up in the air. Okay, not not crazy cockeyed here. There, bend, oh. bend, there. Now, just go with this knee. All the way down, all the way down. That's good. <laughs> so, that method is quite a bit more severe. It's hard. I'll, I'll demo this one. Okay. I have one good knee right now. So I get my positioning up here. And then I'm just going to bend all the way down and then all the way back up. And this one is super tough if you do it the single legged variety. You've got to really concentrate on keeping your core tight and then working that leg. So if you want an extra hard burn for your last couple of sets, try it with the single legged variety, see if you like it. 
And as usual, thanks a lot guys for watching. More videos will be posted later this week. So this is Captain Smash and Major Major Mash. Oh Major Mash. We gave her a, we gave her a, a rank? Yeah, a rank increase. Feel great promotion today. <laughs> so thanks so much. Um, remember to give us a like, give us some shares, talk us up on the web, and stay strong, stay safe, wash your hands, we'll see you soon.